Back in the day, the kitchen was primarily a cooking space. But today, the kitchen has become a living space. Truly, the kitchen is the heart of the home. This is my kitchen. Welcome to Carol's Kitchen. Our musical guests today are Carl Rasmussen on the saxophone and his able accompanist, uh, Mrs. Ruth Brown, who incidentally happens to be his sister-in-law. Carl grew up in Amberley. Ambler. In Ambler, Pennsylvania. Started playing the saxophone when he was in fourth grade and went a long way and ended up majoring in it in music education at Mansfield University and then getting his master's at uh, Baylor University in Texas. And his wife, Susan, is the head of the nursing department at uh, Maranatha Baptist University. They have two children, one of which just got engaged last weekend. Ruth, my good friend Ruth, and her husband moved to Watertown 16 years ago. And she grew up in Pumpkintown, South Carolina and attended college at Bob Jones University where she both got her music education degree and then her master's in piano performance. She teaches college classes at Maranatha and has an active piano studio and is very involved in the music ministry at Calvary Baptist Church here in Watertown. She and her husband Dave are empty nesters with two grown children. So today, for their first uh, piece that they're going to play for us, they're going to play a piece entitled Aria. It's a mournful piece that is considered a classic in the saxophone repertoire.
The first item we're going to put together today is spinach and ricotta stuffed shells. We begin with 15 to 16 ounces, which is a half of this package, of ricotta cheese. The spices, the herbs we add, there is uh, one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, just a pinch of ground nutmeg, interestingly enough, uh, half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And we'll add that to this mixture. And this is a teaspoon of uh, garlic, minced garlic. Mix it up. And while those flavors meld, we're going to be adding some chopped spinach to this mixture. And it's already been thawed. And so uh, we have to remove some of the liquid that is accumulated. Otherwise, it'll make the mixture a little bit too drizzly. If it's not thawed enough, you probably should microwave it just a smidge. And that's what I'm going to do, so give us a minute. The spinach uh, is thawed now, and there's a lot of moisture in it. And the uh, recipe I was uh, looking at said that you should use paper towel to dry it up. But I got creative, and I thought, let me try something else. And I've got this cool dish and a plate. And I, when I squish that, it presses the liquid out of it, and I don't have to mess with paper towels. So there's all that naughty liquid. And now we'll uh, add this to the ricotta cheese mixture and set this aside. Mix up the spinach. <clears throat> Some people who have made this before say they prefer to start with fresh spinach out of the, the dairy case. And that's certainly, if you uh, prefer that, you're certainly welcome to do that. But I'm all about whatever is the most expedient. And the frozen stuff's not that expensive. Quite frankly, it's about the same price right now as the uh, fresh stuff, and I don't have to mess with uh, ah, wilting it. I've got six cheese blend, Italian cheese. This has uh, mozzarella, provolone, asiago, uh, parmesan, romana, fontina, six different kinds of cheese. Actually, all two cups of this uh, get involved with uh, this mixture. If you don't have access to this handy dandy uh, six uh, blend cheese, you can uh, just do a, a mix of uh, mozzarella or and uh, Parmesan is actually what the recipe called for. But I thought, oh my goodness, why not get all these other wonderful cheeses involved in this mixture? And then at the end, we'll have to add some just uh, some other cheese to the topping of this. Our next step in the process is we want to fill these shells. I already cooked them. It's just the Cremette Jumbo Pasta Shells. Cook them according to directions for about 10 minutes uh, until they are al dente and, and let them cool off. So we will be stuffing uh, this mixture into the shells and placing them in a baking pan. And 
I've already uh, used a uh, spray to uh, on the pan and was suggested you put just a, a layer of the pasta sauce, just a layer uh, across the bottom to get a little bit of a, uh, moisture on the bottom so they don't stick and save the rest of the uh, pasta sauce to top the, uh, the shells once they're there. So I'm going to use this, uh, this spoon to start stuffing the shells. So now that we have the uh, shells have been stuffed with the ricotta and spinach combination, we're going to top each one of the shells with a spoonful of tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, marinara sauce, whatever tickles your fancy. I made this this past weekend for my sister's birthday party and got input from the guests and they said it could use more sauce. So I'm not holding back on the sauce one iota. Of course you could make your own, uh, but for simplicity's sake, store bought is great. And then sprinkle this mozzarella and uh, provolone combination. It could be just plain mozzarella, but I found this two cheese mix. Cover this, and if you had some kind of dish where you could use foil or whatever, and bake it in a preheated oven, 375 degrees, for 35 minutes, and then uh, take the uh, lid off and let it brown for maybe another 10 minutes. So I'll put it in the oven now. Carl and Ruth are going to play a hymn. This is my father's world. This particular arrangement was a birthday gift from Ruth to Carl, her brother-in-law, way back in 2001. Ruth was finishing up her arrangement on 9-11, the famous 9-11, just as the planes struck the Twin Towers in New York City. And in light of this tragic historic event, the lyrics of the last stanza took on an especial poignant meaning. They say, this is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is king. Let the heavens ring. God reigns. Let earth be glad.
Today's story is entitled, Clearing the Air. I could scarcely think about anything else. It was giving me a stomach ache. It was keeping me awake at night. It was affecting my relationship with God. It was consuming me from the inside out. <sighs> Something had come between me and a fellow teacher at a school where I was teaching early in my career. I'm a peacemaker by nature and probably would have resolved things quickly had not the other person been Mr. Marlowe, a single, attractive male. I truly had no interest in the fellow, but still, that complicated things. The core problem, a crowded school calendar, was nothing new. The event I personally was involved in the evening in question was a three-hour vocal master class. All the private voice students at the school were required to perform and then stay and listen to everyone else sing. Another event on the calendar that night was a rehearsal for the school play. Jerry, one of my voice students, was also the lead in the play. He let Mr. Marlowe, the play director, and me know about the conflict in plenty of time. I suggested that Jerry sing first at the master class and then be excused to play practice. Marlowe agreed. But when I arrived at the master class, I learned that the head voice teacher, a tenured professor old enough to be my mother, had made similar accommodations for several of her students and Jerry would just have to wait his turn. So I sent a messenger to Mr. Marlowe about the dilemma, promising to have Jerry at play rehearsal as soon as possible. Mr. Marlowe's patience wore thin very quickly, however, and he sent a messenger of his own who announced to me loudly enough for everyone to hear, if Jerry doesn't come to play rehearsal immediately, he'll be dropped from the cast. Jerry flashed me a panicked look, and I waved him out of the room. Several days later, I was unable to put it behind me. I was a wreck, and Mr. Marlowe was clearly avoiding me. But I felt wronged. Hadn't I done everything in my power to amicably coordinate our two events? And what had I gotten in return? A threat and public humiliation. Mr. Marlowe owed me an apology, I reasoned. That's when the Lord brought to mind the words of a sermon on forgiveness that I had heard several years earlier preached by a traveling evangelist. His suggestion in situations like this was for the wronged person to take the initiative and speak face to face with the offending party, not to hurl accusations at them, but to apologize. The evangelist said, there's always something for which you can apologize legitimately. And don't be surprised if God uses your boldness to soften the other person's heart. You might even get an apology, but if you don't, don't worry, because your conscience will be clear before God. That preacher was right. As I contemplated my situation, I found plenty of fuel for an apology. My handling of the situation had not been flawless. I could have pleaded more ardently Jerry's cause with the head voice teacher, I could have delivered the bad news to Mr. Marlowe in person, and maybe I didn't know the whole story. Perhaps the messenger that I sent had heralded my announcement to everyone at play practice rather than speaking privately with Mr. Marlowe, and that could in turn have provided precedent for that scathing counter-pronouncement that followed. And there was no denying that since that evening I had been entertaining less than benevolent thoughts toward Mr. Marlowe. I determined, with God's help, to apologize to him that very evening following play practice. So, several hours later, I waited outside the rehearsal hall for the cast to exit. As Mr. Marlowe was about to shut off the lights, I approached and asked to speak with him. He was taken aback for a moment, but indicated for me to continue. I began spewing out my heartfelt apology and had just gotten through my first point when he interrupted. K, 
Carol. I'm the one who should be apologizing to you, he said. My actions the other night were over the top and totally unnecessary. Can you ever forgive me? Yes, I said happily. But only if you'll forgive me. Deal? Deal, he exclaimed and gave me a big bear hug. As I walked back to my apartment that evening, my step was light and my heart filled with thanksgiving. You know, there is something about clearing the air that is absolutely liberating. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus himself said, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Next on our menu today is Italian sausage sautéed with bell peppers and onions. And we will put them, uh, make sandwiches with them, served over on uh, a t uh, French bread, mixing the two countries, Italian and French, French bread with provolone cheese on it, melted. So let's start out with the Italian sausage. Now I began with uh, these stuffed sausages like you might grill uh, uh, outside for and put on buns. And I froze them so that they would cut up nice like this and I pre-cut them all. It's about a pound. The recipe calls for putting something on the bottom for uh, like oil, and I'm thinking, boy, these are greasy enough all on their own that I don't need uh, to add any more fat to something that is quite as fatty as this. Well, while that is simmering a little bit, I'm going to do a little preparing of the breads that we are going to uh, put it on. So I've got two pans because I'm going to open these up because there will be cheese put on both sides of the pan and be broiled. This is a cheesy meal. I brought uh, provolone cheese and cut the package in half so I can put a half a slice on each half of the bread. I brought just a long loaf of uh, French, uh, French bread with sesame seeds from a local bakery and just cut them where the natural dents in the bread occur. Not sure what you call them, but they look like dents to me. Well, this is getting nice and brown and getting some, some good uh, juice in there. The recipe calls for onions, a small onion and a small uh, red, green, and yellow pepper. But I priced peppers and found out that if I bought bird's eye pepper stir fry got the same thing and they actually cost less than the fresh ones. So here you go. So this is from the bird's eye. And how easy is that? So before I put the uh, the bread with the cheese uh, into the oven to uh, broil uh, to yeah broil I'm going to sprinkle a little uh, just a little Italian just lightly a little Italian seasoning over them to add a little visual interest nothing too extreme while this simmers to perfection we will place these in the oven to broil.
Well, at long last, it is time to taste test our spinach and ricotta stuffed shells that turned out beautifully. And our sausage and pepper sandwiches on with provolone and on French bread. So before we start, would you uh, read our verse of the day, please, Carl? I'd be happy to. Thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy. Psalm 86, 5. Amen. Well, let's sing our blessing. Praise, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If you'd like copies of today's recipes, just call 920-262-4021 or email watertowntv at cityofwatertown.org. This program and others are available on demand at watertowntv.com. Thanks for watching. Please join us next time for Carol's Kitchen.